Hello, I'm Georgia Shakti Hill, and I'd like to welcome you to Living in Balance. This is a television show that is designed to positively change your life so that you can live in balance in mind, body, and spirit. One way to do that is with the affirmation. So our program today is called The Power of Affirmations. Come join us. It was at the end of the 1800s and early 1900s that a French pharmacist, Emile Couy, did find that through positive affirmations, people actually began to heal. Well, it was an interesting concept because part of his job was to prescribe for people and he would find that a placebo could be as effective as could be uh, a prescription or an herb or something like that. So Emil said, okay, if it is the power of the mind that is doing the healing, what if we were to perhaps use that power of auto-suggestion and he developed this method, which is called the Kui method. And it was as simple as saying, every day in every way, I'm getting better and better, or every day in all ways, I am better. So we do dedicate this program to him. He is the one who started this whole concept of the power of the affirmation. But also in modern times, we're using them more in our healing. And it is with Louise Hay that we have found also that the affirmation is really life changing. Her one that I enjoy so much that is so simple is just all is well. She ends all of her other affirmations with simply saying, all is well. And if we are able to do that, we can positively change our lives. We have an author who's with us today, and I am so pleased to welcome Dr. Ron Dalrymple. Welcome. Thank you, Georgia. Very good to see you again. Nice to be here. Yes, it's wonderful to have you here again. Thank you, very much. you have written a new book, and it has 366 um, affirmations or proverbs or positive, powerful. Um, words to share and you have one for every day of the year including leap year, leap year. That's, right. <laughs> that's the 366 right. it is yeah. called I love you God right exactly okay. well, the idea is that if we dwell upon positive ideas as you mentioned you go back to Emil QA has a profound effect upon the body a healing effect upon the body in fact now in psychoneuroimmunology a whole new area of research we found that positive thoughts and feelings actually program the immune system to function in a much more powerful way it actually changes our neurotransmitters and our hormones in the body to then go and program the white blood cells and red blood cells in the body. They're, they're, they have receptor sites on the blood cells themselves to receive neurotransmitters and hormones, which tell them what to do, to fight diseases, to kill diseases. And don't we love it when science backs up what we have been thinking on exactly. a, a spiritual or metaphysical level, yeah. and we're finding this is so and this is why? Right, exactly. Okay. This is the mind-body connection that's been missing for thousands of years. Yeah. There used to be the old biogenic approach versus the psychogenic approach. Are we just biochemicals in a machine or an animal, or are we something a lot more? Many folks believe we're a lot more than that, but there was a gap in terms of proving it. Now we have some of these connection points filling in. Okay. So we know our thoughts and emotions directly program the body for health or disease. And yeah. for everything, every aspect of our life. And we're talking about now affirmations. Right. And we're going to affirm some very positive things. And I think maybe even our audience may want to jot down some of these because they're really great. Okay. And what I love is like, we're going to start out with one that is very mundane, but it would make a difference in someone's life if they recited this over and over, repeated it, and it is, I remember everything. Right. right. <laughs> that was one that you started in your book, and I thought, okay, I, we should. We should remember everything because how much easier it would be not to be searching for the keys. That's right. Or what happened to my slippers? Exactly. Questions like that. <laughs> well, it does apply to everyday memory, uh -huh. but it also refers to a memory of who we really are. The entire purpose of the book is to help tap into our divine consciousness. We're not just physical beings or mechanical beings or animals. We are also, we're really spiritual beings who inhabit a physical body. 
to learn great lessons in life. Ah, so if we're going to remember everything, you're talking about the big everything Absolutely. with the capital E, and Absolutely. that's how we had that with a capital E on it yeah. too. Who we really are, what our true identity is as spiritual beings. Now, yeah. I said some of my favorites, that one of the ones that I've shared with my audience many times is um, I have a thin and healthy body. Uh, yes. And I decided I didn't want to just have a healthy body, and I didn't want to just have a thin body. Right. But I wanted to have this as something yeah. I would repeat over and over, and that again is on a very like mundane level, but if we don't have our health first, right, right. what else matters? That becomes right. a priority. Exactly. Okay. Health must come first. Absolutely. And those are powerful affirmations. They do work. Yes. They absolutely do work. Yes. Yeah. And um, the more I dwell on spiritual things, the more spiritual power flows through me is one of your affirmations. Exactly. Well, one of the key ideas is that we have a conscious mind, a subconscious mind, and the very core of our being, a superconscious mind. This goes back to Carl Jung yes. and some of the Hindu ideas and Buddhist ideas, and also what Christ and Moses were teaching as well, I believe, that we are spiritual beings, that the power of God and presence of God is inside of us. And that superconscious mind or that divine presence feeds information to the subconscious mind, which kind of runs the system automatically. The conscious mind takes in input from the sensory world and analyzes what's happening around us. But the goal is that the superconscious mind will drive the system if we listen to it. And that's where we're yeah. always talking about in this world, there's so many negative inputs that we have to replace them it, on a conscious level. Yes. We need to do this because that is our, our, our responsibility to ourself and our little ego and psycho self and super conscious. <laughs> right, right. A lot of negatives do come at us, like if you're just driving down the road, for example. Here in Florida, it's, it's now January. A lot of folks come down from the north and are driving very fast competitively. It's easy to get angry, isn't it? Or they're not driving fast at all. <laughs> well, that's true. There, a, we have those extremes <laughs> that's here. That's true. There are, there's a parallax there. <laughs> Traffic right. is an issue no matter where you live. That's right. Okay. That's right. So that's high stress, and we, we also face stress of financial pressures folks often do and whatnot, and relationship pressures, things of this nature. So a lot of negatives might be coming at us, so it's very important to try to release that, not attach those negative thoughts and feelings, and then replace them with very positive ones. But even to go beyond what Emil Cuey was talking about, that was very, very important stuff he established, very, very profound stuff. But we also are divine beings. The more we dwell upon those very ideas and command forth that presence, that presence comes forth in our lives very powerfully. And I love one of the um, uh, Proverbs yes. affirmations. All problems are only challenges. Right. And when we're in the middle of that problem, right. uh, it's good to remember that. And you finish that with another line, all problems are only challenges. And no challenge is a problem. Okay. So it negates the entire power of the problem over you. Yeah. The idea is we have all power over all situations in our lives, but we've forgotten that. We're distracted by the world of illusion. We believe in, in false beliefs. We have low self-esteem. Other people control us because we let them control us. But the key is we have the power if we acknowledge that and begin to use it. And it's also a philosophy that yeah. um, everything is in divine order. That's one of my favorites. And also with that, then we don't always know why something is happening, but at the end result is always positive and it is always for the best. Yes, if we learn from it. Okay. If we make it a positive thing. Okay, so that's. So, yeah, so all things are good if we the make conditional. them good. <laughs> right, right. But the key is not to get tied up in the negative stuff that might come at us or interpret it that way, but see it as being only a challenge to rise above. And there's also a kernel of truth there for us. Every problem we encounter is telling us something to rise above in our lives to conquer. It's an opportunity yes. then to learn. Exactly. 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 We need to do that. Yeah. One of your affirmations that I really enjoyed too, and I kind of thought, well, we can use this when we're tired, but I'm sure you have a much deeper meaning for it too. I am pure energy. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, it certainly helps to give us more energy at times, but yeah, the idea is that we are, again, divine beings and energy beings. We go back to Einsteinian physics. You know, all matter is energy. Matter is just energy resonant in a certain frequency or a certain form at that time. We are truly energy beings. Our thoughts are energy. The idea is that we, as we think certain thoughts or whatever thoughts, we give off energy waves. So we think the divine thoughts and command the divine presence in our lives, that flows through us very powerfully, makes things happen. And the more contact we have between the conscious mind and the superconscious mind and clear away all the illusions within, then that power flows very directly to the conscious mind and to the world around us. So we create perfect health in the body and can manifest in our lives whatever we dwell upon, whether we like it or not. So it's important to take responsibility for what we're thinking about, what we're feeling, because we will make things happen whether we realize it or not. 
Well, and see, that was one of the things, too. There are some quotes that you have from the Bible that are in um, your book, too. And, of course, this was before email. Right. Right. <laughs> and so this is not really all that new, that what we dwell upon, what we think about, we will right. create. And so right. that's why if we want to have those positive things in our life and we want things to be flowing well, then we need to be dwelling upon the positive rather than exactly. upon the negative. Exactly. You know, we might think about that we are very, very powerful beings, creative beings, who powerfully create a world of delusion or not, a world of truth or delusion depending upon us. Now, if we're confused by the world, we create things and then experience them and say, see, I was right. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. It must be real because it was physical. But we create that in our lives. We attract those circumstances to us by what we think about feeling beforehand. So the, f the fact is we're creating our lives constantly and we're very, very powerful divine beings. Once we realize that, we take responsibility and say, well, wait a minute now, stop creating the negative stuff. Let's go back to who we really are. Let that positive force flow through us. And the important thing that you're saying, two things there, is that you realize how powerful you are. Right. And also that you take responsibility then for yes. what's going on. One of my favorite things, which doesn't sound kind, is there are no victims, only volunteers. Good. And yes. what very that good. means is you take responsibility for yes. what is going on in your life. You're not at the effect. Exactly. I spent 12 years in Maryland running a private practice. I'm a psychologist doing psychotherapy. And what I found with many disorders was self-pity. It's at the core of many people's problems. Yes. Feeling sorry for themselves, poor me, look what happened to me, it always happens to me. The average person thinks about 95% negative thoughts all day long. How does that program their body? That's incredible. Via the immune system. What's that creating their lives in terms of circumstances they experience? Yeah. Negative stuff negative conditions, and you can see a direct correlation of their negative thoughts to what's manifest in their lives. Oh. But when you teach them to turn that around and think positive thoughts, even beyond that, to think divine thoughts, then what manifests? It's totally different. Mm. Okay, then, so you're taking it above the positive right. to the divine. <laughs> I like that. I yes, mean, that's, that's, yeah. that's pretty powerful. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to go over more of your affirmations because I think this is very powerful. So if you will stay tuned, we will be back with more of the power of affirmations. And if you are just joining us, I'm Georgia Shakti Hill, and we're talking about the power of affirmations, and we're talking with Dr. Ron Dalrymple, and I'm so pleased to have him with us. Thank you, Georgia. Great to be here. The book that you have written, you said, really wrote itself, I Love You, God. Right. Okay. The first half of the book came in one day. Basically, a lot of preparation went into it, but the inspiration followed the preparation. I've been uh -huh. studying these ideas for many years, metaphysics, and combined that with psychology and physics in general and whatnot. And then one day, the title came to me, I Love You, God. The idea being that whatever we beam out comes back to us. And remember, Christ said, love, love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. I thought, well, if we love God powerfully all the time, what comes back to us but profound energy, insight, and illumination? So I thought to call the book that, the idea started to flow, and I wrote the first five and a half months for the book in basically a few hours mm -hmm. while driving in my car, which I should not mention, but <laughs> I was, you know, paying attention to the road, riding as fast as I could. My arm got tired for several hours, but they, they just flowed right out because that higher mind was speaking through me. Uh -huh. It was almost like I wasn't writing it. Well, I want people to know a little bit about your background right. because quantum psychology is a, a, right. an area that you have developed and that you're very right. comfortable with. But tell us, and also you're teaching in Japan. Yes, and I teach uh, college courses for Maryland University overseas. I'm teaching in Asia right now, and I had a practice in Maryland for 12 years uh, doing psychotherapy. But quantum psychology, the idea is that we are more than just physical beings. We're not just biochemicals. We're not just, as I mentioned before, machines or animals. Uh -huh. that we are something far more than that. that we are energy beings. That our thoughts give off waves of energy. And there's a thoughton, what I refer to as a thoughton, as opposed to the photon. The photon in, in energy is a particle of light when it manifests with matter, interacts with matter. But propagating through space, it acts as a waveform. The thoughton is exactly that same concept for thoughts mm -hmm. that manifests as a physical, uh, physical particle, interacts with matter, but propagates as a waveform through space. Yes. Now, you are an author of other books, too. Yes. And we've talked about those in a, a past program. One of them I liked for a while was uh, The Power of Creative Thinking. Increase your power of creative right. thinking in eight days. Right. And I thought you might give us a few real quick hints. Okay. But course. also The Inner Manager and The Feeding, those right. um, very, very good selling books, too. But yeah. well, what about? Uh, uh, Give me just a real good hint of this creative thinking. What might we do? Well, the creative thinking comes from learning how to program our minds to think positively. So we change our, our esteem, our self-esteem, and think of ourselves as, as positive creative beings to tap into the subconscious, superconscious minds. But also it's thinking patterns, 
it goes through ways of logically analyzing situations, trying to tap into your own creative nature, but also practicing certain techniques. So it has three approaches to it. One's cognitive, our thinking patterns. One is self-belief or attitudinal, and one's behavioral or what we practice. Mm -hmm. Built to an eight-day program with a pre-test and a post-test. But we also right. do have here then too this same concept of that positive thinking about ourselves and our creativity. So this is again, this is not a new and different for you that you've been thinking right. along the lines of affirmations. Exactly. One that I felt was very important Important that I wanted to share with our audience too. I forgive all, always, instantly. Yes, exactly. We save a lot of time if we do that instantly, yeah. don't we? <laughs> well, again, since we are creative beings and divine beings, following these, these precepts, if we think negative thoughts, get angry at somebody, if we hold grief inside, or any kind of negative thought or emotion, what's going to manifest but negative things in our lives. So we must forgive other people constantly for the things they do and release that energy, release the negative energy. As quickly as you can. As soon as you realize you're thinking right. negative, release it, forgive them, and forgive yourself for all things done in the past which you want to be forgiven for. Mm -hmm. Ask other people to forgive you when you need to, and always forgive them instantly when they make a mistake or harm you in some way. You are asking a lot of us on this. It's difficult. One, yes, this, this is, is difficult. part of being grown up spiritually too, is it not? Okay, yeah. but um, along that same line, I love all people and experiences from my past to free my present and future. So right. it's kind of conditional that we release that past and yes. uh, forgive in order for now and the future to be better. So exactly. that's more yes. of this same concept. Forgiveness right. is the key to happiness is my, one of my favorites from The Course in Miracles. That's very powerful, that's very powerful. It is. We forgive and then we replace the negative thought thoughts and feelings with very positive loving ones instead, if we beam out love to all people at all times and all situations, what comes back to us? Oh yeah. Perfect. And that's why one of yours, yep. I bathe myself in pure love morning, noon, and night. Yes. Buddha was famous for saying that. It was one of his sayings. In fact, an old story about Buddha you might have heard. He was giving a, uh, some talks one day and walking around through a village and there was a heckler in the crowd who wanted to really get him because he couldn't stand this guy thinking positive and whatnot. Followed him around, started insulting him, putting him down. Buddha, you're, you're full of baloney and whatnot. Buddha just smiled and walked away. Well, this guy's irate and he's more angry. What are you, you're walking away from me? You're not talking to me? He walks after Buddha again, again insults him. Buddha smiles and walks away. He insults him a third time. Buddha finally turns and says, well, let me ask you a question. If you give somebody a present and they don't accept it, who owns the present? And the whole crowd goes, ah. Oh. <laughs> Buddha was saying, bathe yourself in pure light and love and those things will not affect you. It bounces back to the person who throws it at you. He did not accept the negativity That's from right. the gentleman. So it, be like, it stayed exactly. with him. Yes. And that, and that protects us when we do that. Now, we're coming back to one of those huge ones that are so important, and that's what we had talked about before, too, with not being a victim nor a volunteer. I take full responsibility now for everything I create. That's right. Now, that's very empowering, but in some people's lives, they maybe aren't ready for that. So that's a shift in consciousness that has to come. Yes, it is. A lot of folks, again, I found through psychotherapy, a lot of folks want to blame somebody else for their problems. It's poor me, but also look what was done to me by somebody else. People like to play the victim. They would get a lot of attention. You feel sorry for them. And they don't make the changes. We must take responsibility. In fact, we create our lives constantly. We might have been abused as children or neglected in certain ways, but once we're in the adult years, we want to take charge of our lives, release all that negative stuff, and recreate who we are. But we must take responsibility for it. Also, in drug alcohol abuse, that's one of the biggest cop-outs there is somebody else made me do it or somebody else's fault it wasn't me. But you see it in all kinds of disorders. Folks try to disown responsibility for what they create in life. If we take responsibility, then we can also take charge. Yes, so. it, that's the empowering part. Right. Yeah, and so that's where yes. um, the individual then can create what would be positive because whatever has happened to that point, and you know, everybody has their, their story. That's a sad right. story. I mean, right. very few of us have been through yeah. our lifetime without some very negative things yes. happening. Of some, of course, more extreme than others, right. but it's how we react and how we deal is where we have control. Exactly. We all go through those negative things, but again, their challenges help us learn and grow and to transcend them to make us stronger spiritual beings. One of yours that I really liked, and this is something that's even fun to do if yeah. you do it on a conscious level. Every person I meet teaches me something I must learn. Right. And that is really kind of neat if you, th if you go out 
into the world one day and you just, whoever it is that you're encountering, you think, yeah. I wonder what my lesson will be here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a good reminder, is it yeah. not? It is, it is. Or maybe we can help them in some way, uh -huh. which then also helps us. Oh, sure. When people come to us for help, it's best to help them, give them what they need right then and there, which then lifts them up. Then it also comes back to us when we need help. But each person does teach us something whether it's being an abstraction or an immediate uh, result, whatever it might be. But each person in our lives teaches us something, and we hopefully teach them something as well, if they're listening. And you also ask us to listen to the still, small voice within, for it guides us unerringly. Absolutely. In decision-making, sometimes that's a little tough. It is. And so if it we is. can get really quiet, and right. we can say, okay, what do I really feel about exactly. this? What do I really want to do? Yes, if we go down to a deeper level to talk to that superconscious mind within us, which is what this is all about, uh -huh. doing these kinds of affirmations, gets us in contact, it always tells us what to do which will make things work for us, not against us. There's often a strong intuitive feeling that just really feels right. If it feels right, it probably is. Mm -hmm. But the ego gets in the way and argues against us. Oh, no, you must do this, must do that. Often those are illusions which take us off course or somebody else gives us some misadvice to take us off course. I want you to share with us the process. Like Emil suggested that it was, you repeat that every day in all ways, I'm yes. better. Right. Uh, 20 times in the morning and 20 times at night. What's yes. the process that you recommend in for us to use this. Right. Well, the best way is to get to a deeper level of mind. One way is called a 3 two, one technique where you say 3-3-3, three, 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 I'm relaxing my entire body, taking long, deep breaths. Then 2-2-2, two, 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 I'm relaxing my entire mind, releasing all negativity. Then 1-1-1, one, 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 I'm going to the level I want to be at, do the work I want to do. So you're at a deeper level already. You close your eyes, which cuts off a lot of the feedback to the brain. You get to a deeper level just by relaxing within a few, few brief seconds. And then visualize the fact that we are divine beings. And then focus on what you want to make happen or upon these proverbs to really put them into the conscious mind, subconscious mind, to connect with the superconscious mind. Okay, so tell first, us our 3 two, one again. Okay, 3 means 3 3 3, relaxing the physical body. Okay. Then 2 2 2, relaxing the entire mind. Okay. Then one one, one going to the level you want to be at. That's actually a civil mind control technique, yes. three, two, one technique to get to a deep level really quickly. The more you practice that, the more quickly it works. And from that level, you contact your superconscious mind and then focus on these kinds of concepts or what you want to make happen and then release it and see yourself as being that divine being, projecting the ideas out to the world. You might even see rays of light leaving you, manifesting in your life those, those things you're that trying to make happen. Yeah. All experiences are designed for my ultimate good fortune. Right. Exactly. Uh, I like right. that. That was yeah. one of yours. Yeah. All experiences are designed for my ultimate exactly. good fortune. Exactly. All these things teach us something, again, to learn about, to grow from, to rise above, to become stronger, more enlightened divine beings. Ah, okay. Yeah. Well, I have appreciated this wonderful, positive day that we have spent together. Well, thank you. I consider it good fortune. Yes. Well, it's wonderful for me to be here. Thank, thank you. you. Good to see you again. If you would like to be in touch with Dr. Dalrymple, and also we always love to hear from you and we always respond. Stay tuned. We'll let you know how. Rather than 95% of negative thinking, would, why do we not spend our time in positive thinking? With the power of affirmations, you can do that, and it will help you to live in balance in mind, body, and spirit. Until next time, I'm Georgia Shakti Hill. May you be well, happy, and peaceful.